Check this out, guys. It's not even that windy of a day, and we're just making. It's a really. It's coming from uh, a direction that the wind turbine really likes, and it makes a nice, solid amount of power. Uh, I stopped resetting this for the last few weeks, or two weeks now, I think, and that's how much it's made over two weeks. No, week and a half, just under two weeks. So it's not always making me power. Uh, but it did make this this amount of power pretty much in two days uh, Maybe a day and a half or two and a half days. I mean just because uh, The other days we just had zero wind and the thing was doing nothing. So When it does make power it makes decent power about I don't know one and a half to two kilowatts a day It's not a ton, but I mean It's better than nothing and it's usually at night. So that's kind of cool We still have what's well, Getting late into the day, so we're not going to make much power, much more power. We're fully charged. Making 2,000 watts there and 2,000 watts here. So that's nice. Plus whatever this is making. Running off the Magna Science today. Not running off the Reliable at the moment. Just because uh, the Magna Signs are nice because you got the transfer switch. I can switch everything over really easy. I also have the breaker, I can use the magna sign, but right now if, uh, usually, like if we're running off grid, like say we don't have enough sun, I have the magna sign set up as a UPS, so when the power, say the grid goes down, everything flicks over, and we all we see is like a slight flicker in the lights, and then uh, we're completely off grid, so that's why I've been using the magna sign lately, because we're most mostly off grid, like we have been off grid solid, for over a week without even touching grid power. But sometimes if we get too many cloudy days in a row, this time of year, uh, I do have to go on grid for a day to let the batteries charge up and then I'll be off grid again for a week or whatever it is. But everything's working really well. I got uh, Reliable's new 8,000 watt inverter in the mail coming. I don't know when it's gonna come, but apparently it's completely different. They've, they've remade it. It's totally different. I'm going to be doing testing on it. Um, I'm going to open it up. We're going to look inside. I'm going to see if it's better. Hopefully it's better. Uh, like this one is nice. I like this one a lot. Uh, you just got to be careful with overloading and whatnot. They have this one here, the most re recently revised one. This one actually puts out the least amount of power out of any of them they've put out yet. But it also has the most safety. So what it does, when you overload it, instead of just trying to power it like the first model did and the first one had a wicked surge it could surge probably quite a bit over 8,000 watts that was pretty good these ones don't surge over 8,000 watts anymore that's where the safety just kicks in and uh, yeah they've been really modifying the output and how much power can output they do output less power now uh, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna last longer just because of the safeties they put in like now if you go over a certain amount of watts, I think it's around like 7,000 watts or something like that, or getting close to 7,000 watts, the voltage would just start drooping. And, the, and it's purposely drooping and it allows you, and it starts flickering as well, so it allows you to know that it's, it's, it's drooping, where before it would just power it, power it, power it until the MOSFET's blue. So it, it's very interesting the changes that they've been making. But I'm very excited to see the new one. Yeah. Still making tons of power, 4,400 watts. Now, actually I'll leave this open. Now I'm gonna show you. I haven't forgotten about this inverter. The problem with this inverter is, is this, uh, it's pretty much uh, an Ames inverter. This is just the original manufacturer. I can't actually remember the name of it right now, but I can't use this with my system because it shuts off at 60 volts, which is a pain in the butt for me. But as soon as I bring this up to my grandparents' cottage, where they have a 12 volt, a massive 12 volt battery bank, which is soon going to be a decent size 48 volt battery bank, then I will be able to make videos on this thing. And it's going to be hooked up to a 7,000 watt generator. And how many watts of solar? I think about 1,500 watts of solar. And they are going to be expanding that. So there's lots of videos to come. Anyways. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed this update. So we got 2.45 kilowatts going out, around 51 amps. Let's 
Sorry about the shaky camera. My uh, lens is dirty. We got 3.1 kilowatts coming in here. We got 3.4, 3.5 kilowatts coming in here. Wow, that's pretty good. Wind turbine is not doing anything today, but we've almost put 4 kilowatts in <coughs> total. We got 6,600 watts coming in. It's not bad. 25 coming out, 66 going in. How are we doing for heat? This one's warm, not too bad. This one's not near as warm. I got a fan blowing up up here. The 250 always gets way too warm in comparison to the 150. Everything's working great though. I'll beat you guys if anything happens. Well, it's still pulling over 2,000 watts. We've got the dishwasher going over there. And then, in here, got the heater going. Pumping out lots of warm air. It's nice and sunny out today. Keep this closed to help keep the heat in because the windows are like a big hole in your wall. What are we making? Oh, look at that. We got 3,600 there, 3,500 there. Wow, we got 7,000 watts coming in, 7,100. This is more power than my uh, big generator can put out. It's crazy. Wow. Looks like we're going to be hitting full charge today, no problem. And we are almost at, let's see, last night I think we went down to about, I don't know, like 62 volts, something like that. When I woke up this morning, it was almost at uh, 63 volts, so just from the sun. Maybe we'll hook up some batteries today. How's it going, guys? Just doing uh, some modifications in the trailer, getting rid of this this uh, buck boost charge controller and replacing it with a 40 amp uh, eSmart 3. Uh, I burnt out my 20 amp, I don't know what happened. I'll tell you what happened. What I did was the only thing that was plugged in was the battery and I decided to, to loop a wire differently so I, I took the battery negative off looped it around and put it back into the battery negative. I don't know if, if it was because the caps were just charging or what, but the screen had shut off. As soon as I hooked it back in, boom, fried, made a pop. Don't know what happened. Hopefully this one does not do that. They are fairly cheap and uh, I've seen people uh, have success with them. I got my 1500 watt heater running off of the system, keeping me warm because it is freezing out. So we're going to hook this up and see if we can mount it somewhere nice. There's not really any room in here for it. It's too big of a charge controller. And uh, we'll go from there. Alright. So we got it installed. The only spot I could find for it was right in front. And, well, without this here, it just closes. I might have to put a bump stop so it doesn't, oops, sorry, so it doesn't rub on here too much while we're driving. But, uh, yeah, everything's working. Batteries are drooping under load now so the the output droops with the input because this inverter likes to stay at 48 volts which we are not at because this thing's been running in here for about an hour and the batteries are very cold it is kind of snowy outside you can see we are making a tiny bit of power not much uh, I can't show you because I'm filming with my cell phone but I could I also have the app from this BMS here see that'll focus in there there so yeah it's awesome it's working great this this one didn't go boom but man when I connected it it sparked like three or four times like and it was big sparks like it was, if I didn't know a hundred percent that I was putting it in the right spot I would have immediately pulled it out and been like what the heck's going on because it, it wasn't just one big spark it was multiples 
but this one when it made that big spark it worked so i changed the parameters using the cord in the laptop i'm actually going to go into it and double check the parameters for this thing and uh yeah can't wait for a sunny day see what kind of power we pump out out of 670 watts we'll see what we make because the most i can make out of oh i already took it out the little green charge controller was about absolute peak when we're at the highest voltage so 50 volts was about 400 watts so th with this we should in the middle of summer see at least i'd say 600 watts so we'll see anyways thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed the video i want to make a little comment on uh, this heater in here it started extremely cold in here and now it's at least like it's not bad in here now and it's just a house trailer. It doesn't have very good insulation or nothing, but uh, that's what you can do with a, a good off-grid system. We'll be using the AC in the summer. Thanks for watching. I just started filming this earlier. One thing I noticed, it said 36 volts, because when I hooked this up, this was sitting at about 45 volts, and so if it was bulk, if, it was, if each cell was at 15 volts, it would be a 36 volt system. That's what it went to. I need the safe. Uh, 48 volts I noticed that I was getting no charging input unless I was under 45 volts when this was set to uh, a flooded battery so disconnected the battery negative disconnected the solar negative now I'm gonna hook up the battery negative first and hopefully this doesn't go boom and I'm gonna record it this time see if I can put this in here to record that I got some stuff in the way. I don't know if you can see anything. I have no idea. Anyways, here we go. So this is battery negative. And off we go. Oh yeah, it says 48 volts and it didn't blow up. Awesome. I'm happy. I half expected this thing to short out, to be honest. Because that's exactly what I did last time. And it shorted right out. Just, actually, it didn't short out. It just full of died. Anyways, we're going to hook everything back up. And we'll get back to it. Awesome. It's working. Now we're actually getting some decent power coming in. It's late in the day, and it's getting cloudy. Now i got to plug in the cable and make sure it still remembered my settings for the lithium batteries so they don't get overcharged. Even though we do have a BMS that should cut off the current, I still want to double check. So I have two safeties. This will have to fail and the BMS will have to fail for these batteries to ever go catch on fire or anything like that. Here we go. All right, so here we have all my settings, or not the settings, this is just showing the charging voltage and whatnot. Okay, let's go into, where's my mouse? There it is. This is what I got it set to. The so bulk charge is 12.5. I put equalize at 12.6 just so once in a blue moon the batteries will go all the way up. Uh, da -da. Float charge is also 12.5. Over voltage recovery is 12.6. Over voltage is 12.8. So this is a 3S com configuration. You got to times all this by 4 to get 48 volts, which I am now sitting at. As you can see, right? Let's see if this will focus. Now it says 48 volts. Awesome. Didn't say that before. If I would have kept it there for too long, it might have broke. I don't know. But everything looks good, so I am going to close it. I didn't have to change anything. It memorized it. So, yeah. Awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Well, this isn't the most I've produced yet, but it's, it's close to it. We got 14.3 there and 15.1 there, which is funny because... This one's got a lot, like over a thousand watts more solar than this does. But this, uh, just at the right angle right now, where these ones kind of face, these ones I got some west facing panels, which are kind of useless in the winter. But this one is just true self, and you can see true self. You know, winter time makes more power, but all in all, we're doing pretty good. You even got some wind power coming in. So we got uh, almost. By the end of today, I bet you'll be at 30 kilowatts, at least. Anyways, 
think this video is getting way too long. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this update.